diabetes is a growing problem in both the developed and developing world and is associated with long-term healthcare problems. There are two forms of diabetes, type 1 and type 2, but both are associated with the inability of the body to effectively control blood glucose levels. This video will aim to show how ineffective regulation of blood glucose occurs and go through some of the consequences for our health when it does. In order to understand how glucose control goes wrong, we must first understand how healthy regulation is conducted. This means understanding the relationship between glucose and the hormone insulin. Glucose is obtained from our diets. It's an important energy source for our cells. However, glucose must first be able to enter a cell before it can be used. And to successfully pass through the cell membrane, it needs help from the hormone insulin. Insulin is secreted into the blood by specialist cells in the pancreas. It can be thought of as a bit like a key, unlocking the cell and allowing the glucose to enter. Insulin interacts with the membrane of the cell, making it permeable to glucose. Once the glucose is inside, it can be broken down and used for energy. Insulin therefore controls the uptake of glucose from the blood, ensuring that the steady fuel supply for the cell and that the glucose is not used up too quickly. When blood sugar levels are high, some of the glucose is stored away by the body for later use. It's taken into the liver and skeletal muscles where it's converted into glycogen, a stored form of glucose. It's also absorbed into fat cells. Insulin is again the hormone that regulates this process. As with other cells, the liver, muscle and fat cells cannot absorb glucose without insulin first interacting with their membranes. Insulin therefore controls how much glucose is stored away. So let's take a look at insulin and glucose in action. If we eat a meal, our blood sugar levels will rise. Specialist cells within the pancreas are sensitive to glucose levels and will secrete more insulin into the bloodstream in response. The increased insulin levels will lead to greater interaction with cell membranes, promoting greater uptake of glucose into the cells. The high insulin levels also promote increased storage of glucose in the liver, muscle and fat cells. Glucose levels in the blood will begin to reduce as the sugar is taken into the body's cells. The pancreas detecting this change will also reduce the rate of insulin secretion, ensuring the supply of glucose is not used up too quickly. The hormone glucagon, also secreted by the pancreas, is responsible for the conversion of stored glycogen in the liver and muscle back into glucose. High insulin levels suppress the release of glucagon into the blood, preventing the release of the stored sugars. However, if glucose levels become low, for example when a patient is fasted, then insulin levels will also drop. With insulin levels reduced, the release of glucagon is no longer suppressed. It can now interact with the liver, stimulating the release of glucose and restoring blood sugar levels to within a safe range. This continuous cycle helps maintain blood sugar levels within safe parameters. Blood sugars are not allowed to become too low, depriving the body of its fuel supply, or too high, the consequences of which we will look at later in the video. It's also worth noting that while insulin levels will reduce in response to low blood sugar levels, in a healthy person, there will always be some insulin present in the blood. If insulin levels were to reduce to zero, then our cells would not be able to take in glucose at all and would cease to function. We need insulin to live.